So, what do you do to get ready to attend performing arts exchange or conferences such as the performing arts exchange? Well, I'll, I'll take that because I really have to give Fran all the credit for mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm, I'm the salesman of the company. Fran, Fran runs the, the marketing and she's the networker with the, with the, um, with all of the people that, uh, such as the folks here at PAE. So she's the one who's on the phone. She's the one who makes the arrangements for um, our our travel um, generally in terms of when we're getting there and if we're going to showcase artists and if we're going to uh, be sponsors uh, of some of the trade shows, which we just came from another one where we were sponsors. So everything in terms of marketing, um, taking care of any of our uh, art, the posters that we put up um, at our booth, um, anything to do with marketing, all credit to her. Um, I just kind of show up and, and, and put on a nice tie and smile. So, um, but that's why it seems to, to work so well. I mean, we are fortunate that we come to uh, art, any of the arts markets with a different set of skills. So, you know, I was selling, selling, selling. I was like, as they like to say, throwing stuff against the wall. Uh, before Fran became my partner, and once she became my full-time partner, the marketing is really what pushed us over the top. So I, I, I'd say that without I, without each other, we we couldn't have uh, advanced as quickly as we have. But that's that's the preparation that we do before coming here. You, well, there's more. There's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to all the marketing stuff that we do, uh, we have a number of agents who work with us. Um, so we set up what we call um, in a shared folder. We set up um, a trade show appointment schedule listings, and um, we get the attendee lists from the um, from the, uh, the the conference. And as soon as we get those attendee lists, we start calling and making appointments to meet with to booth to meet at the booth with or for breakfast or for lunch or for dinner or, uh, but certainly filling up the schedule when, while we're at our booth so that um, instead of relying on traffic to walk by, that we're scheduled with appointments, it gives us the opportunity in advance to look up the theater, um, get our notes together, take a look at their website. Right now they're all launching their new seasons, so we're seeing everything that they're bringing in. It gives us some ideas about what we can talk to them about if we don't have a relationship with them. If we do have a relationship, we still take notes, and we're prepared. So when people come to our booth to have a meeting, we know we have information about their theater, we know what they're bringing in, we can ask them very poignant questions before we ever talk to them about what we have to offer them. We start off um, by asking them, about them rather than talking about us and that we found we learned rather early on that that's so much appreciated to to ask them about their their thoughts and they, they may have a show we may look at their schedule and they say these shows aren't working we're looking to go in another direction or we're trying to get younger or we're trying to get more millennials or whatever but by asking questions we don't just throw out because we have a particular artist on our uh, on our roster, um, there's no sense in talking to somebody about a pop show if they're booking world music and classical. And there's nothing that offends a presenter more than talking about what you have and it's inappropriate. Uh, sometimes we've had meetings with people over the past several years where we had nothing for them and we said thank you for stopping at our booth. Hopefully next year we'll have something for you. Let's stay in touch. And they appreciate that. If it's not someone that you've already established any sort of connection with, mm -hmm. they're willing to just engage in a nice conversation for starters? Oh. Listen, um, that's the art of selling, mm -hmm. okay, is to get somebody on the phone and engage them in conversation um, and uh, put their interests in advance of ours first question we tr train all of our agents to ask is, did I get you at a good time? Most instances it's not, but at least you asked a question where you have, you're, you're being courteous and you're being appreciative of the fact that they are very, very busy people. So there's an art to being able to engage somebody on the phone, keep them on the phone, interest them in wanting to talk to you further and share information with, 
with and, and we both have the same philosophy, which is kind of cool. So we've never had a difference. I mean, our, we're very different in many ways, but we're very similar in terms of that ethic, those kinds of ethics when it comes to picking up the phone and calling somebody and not assuming because they picked up the phone that they can talk. And as Fran was saying, just by giving them the courtesy of asking, do you have a moment to speak? Even if they don't, if you, if you assume that they do and just start saying, hi, I'm glad I caught you, you know, let's start talking about an artist. There's nothing that, what, you get right away that, what made you assume that I could just talk? So we, we always teach our agents and you know, we have a lot of young, we have three people that are under the age of 30. So we make sure that they buy into our our ethics, I mean, it's very important to us. Some of them come with that ethics, some of them have to be taught. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, because we have people working for us from the age of 50 down to 23, so. Well, and as we always say, this is a relationship built business. It's, it's all about the relationships. It's not so much artists come and go, from our point of view, venue, uh, buyers come and go, but, if you have a good relationship with somebody and they leave and go to another theater, you'll still do business with them as long as there's a fit between the roster and the new place that they're going to. Um, as I said, artists come and go, but the relationships that you, you're able to build um, are what keep you going. So it's really all about learning how to be a human being and take the, the buyer's interest at heart. You said you sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, all these conferences do have sponsorship opportunities. Yes. Um, why do people choose to, or what kinds of sponsorship opportunities are there? Because no one has talked about any sponsorship things throughout mm -hmm. any of the interviews. Oh, okay. And um, why were you? Why did you? decide that this was something you wanted to do. Okay, that I'll, that, that's something I'll take because I'm okay. involved with all of this. Um, each conference offers the agents and sometimes the presenters and a, a variety of opportunities to be a sponsor. When you give them money, you get certain benefits for that sponsorship. And they, they can be everything from very large sponsorships where you are sponsoring the, the lunch, the keynote luncheon at the conference, and that will enable you in many instances to showcase one of your artists during the luncheon, which gives you, the, which gives you a captive audience of 300 buyers who are all watching your artist. Can't, that, that's money well spent as far as we're concerned. Um, but then there's different levels of sponsorship. You can sponsor a, uh, the, the conference guidebook. You can sponsor, um, the, the, uh, uh, put in a notepad, a, a tote bag. Um, there's all different levels and there are different benefits packages that come with each level of sponsorship. We typically, because we're a young agency, look for sponsorships that give us maximum visibility at the conference. So if it is visibility where we're sponsoring a luncheon and we're able to showcase an artist, that's fabulous. Uh, that also usually comes with you get a good selection of your booth, you get a bigger booth, um, sometimes you get, um, you get a free ad, you get the opportunity to use their email list, you know, so you get a lot of wonderful benefits with that. Um, if the showcase opportunity is not there, we look to find sponsorship opportunities that will give us nice visibility uh, for the money that we're getting and the benefits that we're getting. At the Arts Midwest Conference last month, we were sponsors of the planning guide. It's a calendar for 1718 that goes into everybody's tote bag. And uh, anytime somebody was using the calendar, our name would be on it. And that's a, that we thought that that was a very good tool that the buyers would use on a regular basis. So we bought that sponsorship. It also enabled us to get a better choice of booth and, and a half page ad. Um, at the WA conference a couple of weeks ago, um, we ended up sponsoring the tote bags. And our name was emblazoned by Coastal Productions. It was all over every tote bag. It didn't say the Western Arts Alliance. It said by Coastal Productions. And there was nothing better than seeing everybody in the conference uh, who had registered for the conference walking around with an advertisement for our, our agency. 
Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so that was a very good sponsorship as well. Sure. So we do that to be visible. We do that to have our name known. We do that for some of the benefits. Sometimes the benefits of getting the premium booth pay for the cost of the sponsorship. So. Okay. Nice. This is a, if, if, you, if you love the arts and you support the arts, this is just a wonderful way to combine um, your passion for the subject with whatever your skill sets are. Um, however, if you're going to be an agent, understand that even though this is all about the arts and you're passionate about singers and comedians and, and dance and all this wonderful stuff, it's really all about sales. Okay? It's not, it's not glamorous. Um, there's a lot of weekend work. There's a lot of, it, it's a 24 seven job. Um, we but have, if you love it, it's a lot of, it can be a lot of fun. I got a call just to, to, to tie a bow on this. I got a call Sunday, I'm sitting down to watch football and one of our artists shows up for a matinee, two shows on a Sunday and the artist shows up in, in sound check and the, the presenter walks into the theater and the, the artist has very little voice. So now I'm dealing with, do we cancel the show? Do we reschedule? Do we, what about the show tonight? And what about the two more shows over the next couple of days? So that's over the weekend. So remember that if you're going to go into this business that, that probably 75% of the shows occur Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So just because you walk out the door at six o'clock on a Friday afternoon, if you decide to go in this business, it doesn't end. At seven o'clock, you may be getting a phone call when you're sitting down for cocktails with your friends. So it's, it's um, as Fran said, it's 24-7 uh, and it's sales. Um, but, there's, but it's also sales with benefits. So, so we get to see some fun shows along the way. And, uh, and, and, and be, with, be with some wonderful people. Yeah. So and thank you. Speaking of work, what, uh, what's your length of day like when you come to one of these conferences? If, especially if you've got artists performing at night for your showcases? It's, it's all day, all night, Marianne. <laughs> it's, yeah, eight, eight in the morning till one o'clock, two o'clock at night. Yeah. Uh, because we, we get up, we have meetings, sometimes breakfast meetings, then we have booth time, and then we're busy all day, drinks in the lounge, we drink dinner with clients, or passing out showcase, please come to the showcase, please come to the showcase, standing outside the, the room where the showcase is going on, making sure that your artists are happy, making sure that they brought their banner. Hmm. I mean, so it's, you know, and then, and some of them don't start, oh, and then they, the last, the last showcase is starting at 11.55, oops, they had sound problems that get pushed back to 12.35, please don't leave the room, they, they're going to be starting momentarily, please stay here, I'm sorry, I have to go, please stay here, I'm going to, I'm going to put a padlock on the door and not let you out, and, and so we're there till 1, 1 30 in the morning, so it's, um, it's uh, it's but, grueling. It's a marathon. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Yeah.